We've done a lot of team building stuff this week. Let's really zone in here though on the rumors, the scuttlebutt, what you have been focusing on here while you've been in Indianapolis. And let's kick this off with where the draft kicks off in a lot of ways where the offseason kicks off and that is with the Chicago Bears and number one. What have you heard so far about how the Bears are treating the first overall pick and what sort of domino that might be for everything else? Yeah, so most of the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you is really just from having conversations with people at all levels, right? We're talking agents and head coaches, scouts, um, just people associated with these organizations and, and just weighing in on what they think, right? So you sort of try to collect that, and then, of course, you try to talk to the team and you try to get, you try to get the facts. And I'm leaving Indy feeling very confident that the Chicago Bears are in the market to trade Justin Fields, and they are targeting Caleb Williams. I feel very good saying that, that that's the feeling right now at this point. Now, stuff changes. Many things can happen. More interviews happen. More information is revealed. Um, but at this point, this just seems to be the situation. And even just chasing down some people from Chicago. When I say chasing, I literally was chasing them in the Marriott. Um, to just ask them what this has been like in terms of managing all of this attention right now. Yeah. Because they are the talk of Indy. Um, and, and they were all pretty, pretty open about it being, being a lot of, it's a lot, but at the same time, there's optimism. And I forget that sometimes in this, this is such great news for Chicago. Things are, think, yes, is it for those that want Justin back and having to move on from a quarterback who had some success there? And I know fans, a, a majority of fans really like him. He created and, excitement at the position that we very rarely get to see. Correct. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit of sadness to think that they're going to move on, but let's see what they can get in terms of a trade for him. That's m more things to celebrate, what they'll be able to get in terms of compensation. And then, oh, yeah, you're going to probably get the best quarterback in this class who I think we, we most evaluators will tell you he's a franchise guy that can turn this around for them. Most teams drafting number one overall are not in this position. I mean, the Bears finished, like, 17th in weighted DVOA overall and 10th on defense. Like, this is a team that is more of a 500 team than a team picking first. They're, the only reason they're doing this is because of Carolina. Everything right. about the situation is unique. So thinking about the overall trajectory and progress within the building and then potentially dropping the number one overall pick quarterback into that and another top 10 pick, there's plenty of reason for optimism. And I'm not even, like, telling myself that story because I have to. It's just a different set of circumstances with the first overall pick than we normally see. And, and that's what, what I saw in the faces of the people in Chicago. Yeah. It was... Oh yeah, I forgot. This is a yeah. It's a big business decision with a with a ton of pressure. Um, you know, you see Ryan Poles walking around. Kevin Warren. Uh, I saw him speaking at the women's forum, and and you know he he was pretty open about what this what this process has been like. And he's the team president he's now. A, yeah, the CEO. Yeah, mm -hmm, CEO. And but but he's involved, right? Yeah. So not not every. Uh, it's a new era for Bears football. I think a lot of people that don't understand the machinations of it don't totally understand this. So for a very, very long time, the decisions on the football side were made by a combination of George McCaskey, who is, I, I don't know what his exact title is, he's the team president, and Ted Phillips, who was a business person. And now bringing in Kevin Warren is the first time that they've really ceded power to someone from outside the organization in a long time. So the way that that decision is being made in Chicago and all of the decisions over the last 18 months or so since Kevin Warren's been brought in. It's a slightly different era, and I think it's important to remind people of that who maybe don't know that. Mm -hmm. And he spent a lot of this these first few months on the job really just collecting, yeah. not making quick decisions, because we've seen a lot of executives step in, and they immediately want it their way. Yep. And that, that's not his style. It was, I need to figure out and, and get as much information I can about everything, including the quarterback. And, and, it, and it seems that the sense here is that th they're ready to move on from Justin, and, and we'll, we'll see what, what this market's going to look like. So that him. was going to be my next mm -hmm. question. Oh, it, looking at who might be interested in Justin Fields and how that might drive his market, what do you think that looks like in the end? When my uh, United flight landed in Indy, I was immediately uh, on a mission to, to – keep track of all the teams that are going to be in on Justin Fields, right? I'm chasing down Pittsburgh, Atlanta. I'm, I'm just thinking of every team that could use him, where it would make sense, where there's offensive coordinators that, that could have success in, 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 with his type of ability. And now I'm leaving in 24 hours, and I can tell you, I don't think the market is as robust as a lot of people thought. I have the same exact feeling, and obviously that comes with some personal tragedy for me and them not getting much for him in a trade. But uh, even removing myself from it a little bit, that's been the takeaway that I've had, is that there aren't that many teams that are going to be super motivated to go get him, and does that depress his market compared to what we thought it might have been a month ago? I think that there is 
a sense Chicago has been very transparent, right? Ryan Paul shared with the media, we're not trying to drag this thing out. Yeah. We're, we want to move on and, and go. If that's the, you know, the avenue they go. Of course, they're still going to pl- keep their cards close to the vest here to try to build up some sort of leverage. But I, I just don't think that there is a team right now that is going to be aggressively chasing after Justin Fields knowing that the other free agent quarterbacks that are on the market right now that have had more success and maybe a better possibility than trading for Justin. Do I still think he's going to get traded to a team? Yes. But there is no clear team that I'm hearing right now that that makes sense and is having uh, where there's like a lot of chatter about. Here's the the way I've conceived of it. If you are one of the, let's say, five or six teams that is in a pretty urgent quarterback position, here's the teams I would throw in there. Atlanta, Minnesota, Denver, Las Vegas are the four teams I would throw out first. If you have three avenues, in my opinion, to go get a quarterback. One, you have the money to go get a Kirk Cousins. You can shop at the top of the free agent market. You want to win right now. That's an option for you. Two, you're in a position to draft one. Either it falls to you at 10 to 12, or you can move up a little bit in the draft into that J.J. McCarthy range. Three, whatever the consolation option is, and that becomes Justin Fields for one of these teams. So if you think that there are enough quarterbacks in pads one and two to fill all those seats, then the market for Justin Fields starts to go away. And I, I think that's the concern. And I think that's, I think that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we're seeing. Um, you know, and just trying to get an understanding from, from let, let, let's just use Pittsburgh as, as an example. To me, that, that made sense, right? You have Arthur Smith there. You go back and see what Justin Fields did against Atlanta. Yeah, you would yeah, think exactly. that maybe you would think that maybe Arthur goes, "Oh man, this kid can play." But um, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that is something Pittsburgh is is signing up for. It doesn't even feel Pittsburgh. Let, let's just be superficial about it. Yeah. This is no intel. This is just basic understanding of the league. Justin Fields to, to, to the Steelers. That that it's not the Steeler way of doing things. It's and more it, urgent than they typically operate. Correct. Um, you know, Atlanta. All right. So you have. Zach Robbins in there. There's a lot of new. That would be a lot of change yeah. for, for both, for the play caller, for the for the quarterback. And they're a perfect example, right? They're picking eighth. There's probably a decent chance that there will be a quarterback there if they want one. So they're one of those teams that you can see the first two pads playing out because they also have the money to for Kirk if they wanted to do that. Correct. And so they seem like the least likely option when you think of the alternatives they could pursue. You know, and this is a team that values their draft picks. Yeah. They're they're going to be very smart with this, but they also have a roster, as Raheem Morris essentially said, that is built to win. They need a quarterback. That's why he got the job is because the quarterback play wasn't high enough. So they're going to go in on a veteran quarterback, try to bring a guy in who is going to be ready to win immediately. I, I don't I don't necessarily believe that they think that that is Justin Fields at this point. So there are two groups of teams that I would, that I would then start thinking about. One, mystery team that really maybe we don't think about them needing a quarterback, but maybe they do their pre- pending free agent signs somewhere else. They have a spot that maybe we're not considering right now. That's a group of teams. And the second group of teams is, if there's no spot for him as a starter, who is viewing him as a high upside swing as a backup? We have an aging quarterback, et cetera. And then does his market transition more into Trey Lance's market last year rather than a starting quarterback? Correct. I, I know you mentioned Denver before as well. Just mm-hmm. I didn't want to skip over them. You know, I think Jarrett Stidham is, is a quarterback they believe in. They like him. I don't know if they love him just yet, and I think that's that's a fair assessment. Sure, you know he's shown some good signs. He was he was in a a little bit of a b- bizarre situation last year, and you have to figure if he could just get m- more reps in that system with Sean Payton. Um, but that just that that's a that's a place that doesn't make sense to me. Justin Fields. So now we're running out of seats, man. Right, I mean, and, that, and that's where we are. I think headed into here, it just felt that Atlanta and Pittsburgh. We're going to be the leaders of the clubhouse for, for Justin. And I, that is, I'm, I don't feel good about saying that at this point. We're in the same place. And, and I think that that is maybe a little bit surprising, but I think that might be the reality. And if the Bears do intend on trading him sooner rather than later, the return might not be what Bears fans or I think other people might have expected. What if that report that's floating out of flowing or it's going around that uh, they may keep him? Maybe it's because they won't be able to train him. Maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe that that's the situation that we're talking about here. Well, like you said, like it, Ryan Poles came out, he's very transparent about it. I think there's a world where they just say, you know what, we, we're not worried about squeezing every single bit of draft capital we can out of this. That's not the priority. 